everyone, welcome to this class. So we're going to paint a horse uh, in monochrome. You can paint this horse with just one color. Now, I do have a, a class in my old teachable school. It's a, a painting in monochrome and we have a horse actually. We have a landscape there and we have a cat. So that's a course there if you wanna take um, more classes how to paint monochrome in general. So I use masking for the lashes and then some hair over here. Whatever I could see like the lightest hair, the whitest hair, that's where I use masking fluid. Now I have a spare sheet of a paper right here because I want to show you what uh, different color values look like on the paper. So again, we're going to work with two colors. So I have Bonte Brown, I have Raw Umber. So the quick blend of colors, what I mean by it is, this is how I go about it. I quickly just went through the two colors and that's all I want. So this is not the lightest value of the two colors. It's actually like a mid value. If I want this to be lighter, lighter value, then I'm just gonna dip my brush slightly in water and then dilute it more. If I want this to be more diluted with water, there it is, there is my lightest value. Not the lightest, because I can still keep going, I can keep going to dilute it even more and more. If I want this to be darker, then I will go for like a milk-like ratio between water and paint. And that's my darker value. And then I, so when you apply colors here, and it, this will have to be like heavy cream, cream top like ratio between water and paint. The paint won't spread much, but once it dries, you'll have softness here and you wanna do that. That's why I went the background where I have the hair. Now, I, I don't have a washi tape, so I'm just gonna go, I guess, all the way. Better brush, right? And what ratio am I gonna go with? So this is again the two colors, right? Only two colors, Van Dyck Brown, some raw umber. What's the ratio? It's going to be, I'd say like a milk-like ratio, but I'm using a quill brush. This brush holds a lot of water. So it feels like the paint is actually spreading more, more, way more, right? I'm okay with it. I do want the paint to spread more. Here, this will spread a lot faster too. Because the first part is like you want it to be like the horse, but you want some light value in there in some of these areas. So we're just going to look for the darkest areas anyway, and I have a little too much paint, but that's okay because I'm going to go over it in a second. So most of the time, yes, I say I'm using this heavy cream like ratio between water and paint, especially when I'm just adding some background behind some animal. And I do want the colors to look concentrated in a way. But this is different because I want the paint to spread. If you don't want the paint to spread, this is when you adjust that ratio between water and paint, and you might want to grab that heavy cream like ratio. That's fine too. Regroup brush, sunburned. Two brushes together. First, what I'm going to do is grab the two colors again, raw umber, raw uh, bandic brown, and this time this is a little thicker, it feels thicker on my brush, but not too thick. I just want to start adding the darks here. Now I need this now, just based on how the paint's spreading, and this is like the darkest part of this horse. So I'm just grabbing this heavy cream, cream top like ratio between water and paint. So I don't want the paint to spread as much here, so that's why this is cream top like ratio, or I'd say even heavy cream, maybe a little more diluted paint with water. I'm using, again, a, a quill brush, right? This quill brush, it just holds a lot of water, and um, even I'm trying to grab cream top like ratio while the paint spreads anyway. So if I really wanted to have a lot of control, I would actually switch to my round eight golden one, uh, golden one, for example. Yeah, that would be a brush that I would switch to, to have more control. Muscles, like if you see some muscle tone, like over here, we can add some more darks, for example. This needs to be gone through again, like you have to go through some of these lines, uh, either with a damp brush or with a brush where you still have color. I still have color, a little bit of that color on, on the quill brush. Still have some paint, it's on the tip of my brush, just so I have a little more of that hair and over here too i don't need to do all of it just with the regular brush I might as well just use a little bit of this quill brush just i have so much paint on it already 
and just pull it down a bit. And the same thing here, because that's not what we're going for. We don't want hard edges. So I'm just adding colors to the darkest areas that I can see now on the inside of the nostril as well. So this is my Rossiana and some, or I'm sorry, Rossiana Umber and, Bur and Van Dyke Brown. So just did the color uh, blend of the two. But uh, it's not important to have two colors. It's more important that you fo focus on when to apply the, the color and so you don't lose the lights. And now here, what's going on here? There's some darks in here. And then we have darks underneath the nostril. So it's hard to see too, because like my sketch lines dis are disappearing. And I'm going to go for this muzzle before it's too late. So I might have to actually use a stiffer brush, but I also don't need to look that much because there is, it seems like there's plenty of light maybe above here, the slit part. So I wipe my brush on a towel and I begin lifting. Now lifting, it just depends also on the colors you're using. Hi everyone, so I'm back. Uh, everything has dried and it's time to remove the masking fluid for watercolors. So I have a little helper here. Hey baby, would you like to help me? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Start removing the masking fluid. So now we'll be able to see like how everything dried uh, with that without that masking once we remove the masking then we're gonna see lots of like bright white highlights and then we might have to use uh, either just water to uh, tone it down a little bit or we maybe just need to use a little color so first we need to remove it so hey, over here see this you want to go like this okay good thank you that looks good Good job. Good. Is it coming up? You can do like this. You can go like this. You know what's the, what this is called? Yeah. A pickup cement eraser. Can I see that? Yeah. Eraser? Yeah. Eraser. Yeah. Okay, let's start removing all the masking fluid. Good job. Oh, I think you did a great job. Look at that. So you can see the, the all the hair now. Looks pretty, does it? Yep. How about here? Do you want to do this one? Okay, I'll work on the muzzle. Good. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah. yeah, perfect. So sometimes you can actually remove the sketch lines. Yeah. When it when the when we didn't layer it too much, um, when the paper is still kind of whitish in those areas. Okay, that's good, baby, because we don't want to rub into the paper too much because then we could damage the paper. So we just want to go very lightly, very gently next to those lightest areas, like over here too. Okay, can you try to do the ear? And that's it for this class. So please let me know if you have any questions and thank you so much for your time.